Hey Fingsters, today we will be learning how to add time onto a date time object. So adding time to a date time object should lead to a new date time object with the updated time information. So let us have a look at this with the help of an example. So let's say that this is the given date and time object. Now when you go ahead and add five hours to this date and time object, the output should look something like this, wherein if the given time was 12 p.m. then the output should yield a date time object wherein the time should be 5 p.m. So how are you going to implement this in your code? That is exactly what we will be learning in this video. Now before we dive into the solution, let us go ahead and let's have a look at our date time object. In order to create the date time object, we need the help of the date time module. So we have first imported the date time module and then we have created a date time object by the name original underscore time. And within this, we have created the date time object with the help of the date time method of the date time module such that this right here is the given date while this right here is the time. So the date is 19th of February 2020. The time is 12 p.m. Now we want to add five hours to this date time object such that when we get an output, it should be 19th of Feb 2020, but the time should be 5 p.m. That is 17 hours on the 24 hours clock. The first approach to solve this problem is to use the time delta method from the date time module. Since the date time module allows you to manipulate date and time objects with the help of numerous classes, which include date, time, pz info, and time delta. So we are going to use time delta function from the date time module. And then we will add the time to the given date time object. Now let us have a look at the approach that will help us to do this. So to do this, you have to follow a two step process. In the first step, you have to go ahead and create a time delta object wherein you have to pass the duration, which is five hours in this case within the time delta function. So let us have a look how we can do that. Let's create a variable by the name time underscore change. And this is going to be our time delta object. Now we are going to call our time delta function. So date time dot time delta. And now within time delta, we have to pass an argument, which is duration. Now what is duration? Duration can be anything like milliseconds, microseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days, or even weeks. In our case, we want the duration to be hours. So all we have to do is to pass hours as an argument within the time delta function. And then we have to specify a numeric value of the duration, which in our case is five hours. So hours equals five. Now that we have created the time delta object, it is time to move on to the next step wherein we have to add this time delta object that we created to our originally given time in order to create the new time. Let's say that we are going to create another variable by the name new underscore time. And within this, we are going to add original time plus the time delta object, which is time underscore change. We now have to simply go ahead and print the new time. So let's say we have a print statement which looks something like this new underscore time. Now let us go ahead and find out if this works or not. And there we go. As you can see that this was the given date time. And when we went ahead and added the five hours to the originally given date and time object, this was the new date time, wherein you can see clearly that the time is 17 hours. Now a question here is, can we add multiple parameters or multiple arguments within the time delta object? That means let's say we not only want to add five hours, but we also want to add a day. So is that possible? Yes, definitely that is also possible. All you have to do is to go ahead and add another argument within the time delta function, wherein you have to specify days equals one. So now we have added one day and five hours to the originally given time. 
Now let's go ahead and execute this piece of code to find out what's the output. And there we go. As you can see that we now have a change in the date. So 19 became 20 while the time became from 12 hours to 17 hours. So that is how you can use the time delta object to add time to a given date time object. Now there are numerous other ways of implementing this solution. So let us dive into the second solution which will help us to achieve the same output. Well, the next way to solve this problem is to use the pandas library. Now pandas provides you a function by the name date offset which helps you increment or decrement the value of a given timestamp. So in our case, this is the given timestamp and when we use the data offset object, we can add five hours to this given date time object, which will yield us the output that we need. So let us go ahead and use the date offset function from the pandas library to implement this solution. Now the idea is quite similar to the approach that we just followed. All you have to do is to go ahead and first import pandas since you are going to use date offset which is a part of the pandas library. That is why you have to first import pandas. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's import pandas as pd and pd right here is the alias name for pandas. That means it is simply an abbreviation that we will be using instead of using the word pandas as a whole. Now we have been given the original date time object. Now it is time to go ahead and implement the date offset function from the pandas library. So within time underscore change variable, let us use pd dot date offset and within date offset, we have to pass the duration. So in our case, the duration is five hours. So all you have to do is pass hours equals five. Now let's say that you want to increment the time by one day and five hours. You can even do that. And in that case, you have to pass another argument wherein you have to mention days equals one. So what this will do is it will add one day and five hours to this given date time object. And then finally it will print the new date time object. But before you print the new date time object, you have to go ahead and add the original date time object and the duration that is being added by the date offset object, which is stored within time underscore change. So as you can see, even in this case, we followed a two step process. We first created the date offset object. And then in the next step, we added this date offset object to the original given date time object. Now let us go ahead and execute this piece of code to find out if this works or not. And there we go. As you can see that we have the expected output. So this is how you can use the date offset function from the pandas library to add or even subtract time from a given date time object. Now let's discuss another solution to this problem. Just like time delta, you have another function by the name relative delta, which is a part of the date util module. So you can use this relative delta object and add it to an existing date time object, to increment the given timestamp by a specific value. So let us understand with the help of our code, now in order to be able to use the relative delta function, you first have to import it since it is a part of the date util module. So we have to use from date util dot and then the relative delta class import the relative delta function. Well, that's it. Now all you have to do is to go ahead and create the relative delta object. So within time underscore change, let us go ahead and create relative delta object and within relative delta, you have to pass the duration and the duration in our case is five hours. So hours equals five within the relative delta object. Now all that remains to be done is to add this relative delta object to the originally given date time object, which is original underscore time. So we go ahead and create a new variable by the name new underscore time 
and we add original underscore time plus time underscore change wherein time underscore change represents the relative delta object. So that's it. Now we simply print the newly created date time object. So let us go ahead and execute this piece of code. And there we go. As you can see that initially the time was 12 hours, but when we added the relative delta object to the original date time object, the time became 17 hours. So this is how you can use the relative delta object to add time to a given date time object. Well, now let's go ahead and discuss another spectacular library in Python, which helps you to manipulate date time objects. Name of this library is Arrow. Arrow is a Python library that offers a sensible and a human friendly approach to create, manipulate, format and convert dates, times and timestamps. Simply put, it helps you to work with dates and times with fewer imports and a lot less code. So we are going to have a look at the arrow module to solve our problem. So let's import arrow. And now let's say that we want to create a date time object, which represents the current date and time. So let's say that we have a variable time underscore now. And within this, we are going to store the current date time object. So to store the current date and time, all you have to do is to use arrow dot now. That's it. Let's go ahead and print and find out what's the time now. So there we go. As you can see that this is the current date and time at this point of time. Now let's say that we want to increment the current time by five hours. So let's do that by creating a new variable by the name new underscore time equals. And now that we want to shift the current time by five hours, we have to use time underscore now dot shift. And within shift, we have to pass the duration which in this case is hours equals five, which means we want to shift the current time by five hours. Now all that remains to be done is to simply print the newly created time. Now let's go ahead and execute this piece of code. And there we go. As you can see that this right here represents the current date while this section right here represents the current time. And when you go ahead and add five hours to this, it becomes 16 hours, two minutes. So that's how easily you can use the shift method from the arrow library to increment the given timestamp. In our case, we incremented the current time by five hours using the shift method of the arrow library. So please feel free to explore this spectacular library. You'll find the link to this library in the description below. And if you are using the blog, then you'll find the link to this library in the blog itself. So here we go. If you click on this link, it will take you directly to this page, which gives you the entire documentation of the arrow library. And you can read ahead and try to implement this library using different examples. Well, with that, we come to the end of this discussion. But before we wrap up, I want to discuss a couple of more questions. Think of it as a bonus, but these questions are related and quite frequently asked. So we will have a look at these questions. The first question is, how do we create a date time equal to 15 minutes ago? That means until now, we were adding five hours, but now we want to subtract 15 minutes. Well, the procedure is quite similar to what we learned previously. So this was the code that we used to add five hours using the time delta object. And we are going to use a very similar approach, but all that we need to change in this code is in place of hours, it has to be minutes equals 15. And when we create the new date time object, instead of adding the time delta object, we have to subtract it from the original date time object. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and execute this piece of code. And there we go. As you can see, we have successfully subtracted 15 minutes from this given date time object. So the originally given time was 12 hours. 
And when we subtracted 15 minutes from it, it became 11 hours, 45 minutes. So that's how you can solve this question. So that brings us to our next question, which is how do we combine a date time dot date object and a date time dot time object? So let's discuss a scenario to solve this problem. Let's consider that you have two objects that represent the same event such that one object holds the date of the event while another object holds the time of the event. And you want to create a date time object using these two objects. Well, this is a slightly different question wherein we have to combine date and time together. So let's say that we have DT which stores the following date while we have TM which stores this time. Now we want to combine or club these variables together to create a complete date time object. So how do we do that? To do that, you can use a method known as combine. So all you have to do is use dt dot combine date which is dt and the time which is tm and that's it. Now let's execute this. And there we go. As you can see that with the help of the combine method, we have successfully combined this date and this time to create a new date time object. Well, with that, we come to the end of this lecture. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any doubts, please mention them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer all your queries. Thank you.